Hello, and welcome to the last episode of Demystifying Medicine. In this episode, we will be exploring breast cancer pain reduction through the use of cannabis. Cannabis refers to a group of three plants with psychoactive properties known as cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis ruderalis. These plants are made up of more than 120 components, which are known as cannabinoids. The main two components being cannabidiol, CBD, and tetrahydrocannabinol, THC. CBD is a chemical compound from the cannabis plant. It's a naturally occurring substance that is used in products like oils and edibles to impart a feeling of relaxation and calmness. Unlike its cousin, THC, it's not a psychoactive. THC is the chemical responsible for most of marijuana's psychological effects. It acts much like the cannabinoid chemicals made naturally by the body, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. THC stimulates cells in the brain to release dopamine, creating euphoria, according to the Institute. It also interferes with how information is processed in the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain responsible for forming new memories. Cancer pain is a result of late-stage metastatic cancers and primary and metastatic cancers that grow in the bone. For a woman with inflammatory breast cancer, pain or tenderness often is one of the first symptoms. Pain caused by cancer itself is more common in people who have metastatic or advanced disease. Breast cancer starts in the cells of the breast. A malignant tumor is a group of cancer cells that can grow into and destroy nearby tissue. Cancer cells can spread from the breast to other parts of the body, and this spread is called metastasis. If breast cancer spreads, it usually spreads to regional lymph nodes. These are lymph nodes on the same side of the body as the tumor in the following areas, under the arm, around the collarbone, and around the breastbone. Currently, the Sing Lab is investigating the host response to cancer cell release signaling molecules. They are currently investigating the mechanisms associated with cancer-induced pain and cancer-induced depression. Given the application of breast cancer pain and cannabis, we decided to ask Dr. Gurmeet Singh, a professor of pathology and molecular medicine at McMaster University, a couple of questions. I'm Gurmeet Singh. I'm a professor of pathology and molecular medicine um, and a senior scientist with the Hamilton Health Sciences. So most of my research is involved in understanding how cannabis can be used for cancer-induced pain. And what we found is that um, currently there are no good treatments for uh, cancer-induced pain. And it appears that cannabis, especially CBD, might have uh, an effect on cannabis-induced pain. So we've been looking at uh, preclinical models of breast cancer, which is taking um, murine samples, like in, in rats, and treating them with the, with the tumor. And once the animals get into pain, then we give them different doses of CBD or CBD plus THC or uh, THC alone to see if it has any effects on cancer pain. And currently it appears that there is um, some efficacy and there seems to be some sexual dimorphism that is uh, males seem to be reacting better than females and we're trying to understand the mechanisms by which CBD and THC affect cancer-induced pain. It appears that the immune system might be very important in um, in the generation of pain and CBD is known to affect the immune system, specifically the macrophages and the T cells, and thereby it may have efficacy. There are some reports saying that um, cannabis itself might be effective in uh, limiting tumor growth, but we ourselves haven't done any of this work. That work has appeared in the literature, especially from a group in Israel. It appears that uh, breast cancer also involves inflammation and interactions with the immune system. And if anything, the biological contribution is downregulation of the immune system by cannabis and thereby uh, protecting the individual from uh, cancer-induced pain. Most of this pain occurs in uh, individuals who have breast cancer that has metastasized to bone. And we, in our models, we look at 
what happens to the metastases and it appears that cannabis limits uh, metastases and also is able to relieve pain to some degree. We haven't really tested it in humans and these are very early preclinical studies. We need to do a lot more in trying to understand the mechanisms by isolating the various T cells and also understanding what happens to the hormonal levels in these individuals. Uh, my name is Rob Ungard. I'm a PhD student in Gurmeet Singh's lab. I'm in my fifth year and I study cancer pain and neuropathic pain. So cannabis is funny because often treatments, especially treatments for cancer or sometimes for pain, will come from experiments in the lab, basic science, and they go to preclinical experiments and then they go to clinical trials and then they're used on people. But cannabis is a bit backwards since it is something that was used by a lot of people and then sort of demanded to be investigated in the lab. So there's many reports. There's a lot of case reports that cancer works for pain. There are some clinical trial reports, some small ones, and there's a lot of basic science between it now, or I mean, sorry, supporting it. But it's all very spotty. Nothing is really put together. And cannabis is a complicated thing. There's hundreds, thousands of chemicals that come out of a cannabis bud. And so nobody is quite sure which, which of those chemicals are responsible for having an effect, if any. So the steps that need to be taken are isolating the compounds of interest, doing proper preclinical science on them, and doing clinical trials that can be reproduced and show an effect for cancer pain. So a, a brief overview of cancer-induced pain is, um, I mean, imagine a, imagine a tumor. It's, it's a clump of dysregulated cells, if it's a solid tumor, growing somewhere that it ought not to grow. So what we often use in the lab as a model is breast cancers growing in the bone. So imagine this, this massive cell